Let's work a few more examples so you're much more comfortable with this alternating series idea with identifying the alternating portion of the nth term and then the positive portion of the nth term. So uh, we've already worked the first example here, so let's look at this second one here and let's generate some terms. When n equals 1, we have negative 1 to the 1. We have the natural log of 1 plus 1, so that's a negative term. Then we're going to have when n equals 2, negative 1 squared, and we're going to have the natural log of 2 plus 1. And then when n equals 3, we would have negative 1 cubed, natural log of 3 plus 1. So we are definitely dealing with, we can clearly see here in our numerators, we're dealing with an alternating series, no doubt about it. We have a negative term, then a positive term, then a negative term. And so I want to rewrite this nth term so that you can clearly see we have this alternating term and it's multiplied by this kind of positive series, sorry, positive series counterpart. And so when we recognize that we do have an alternating series and we recognize that we want to talk about, you know, is this the case? are our terms, the absolute value of our terms, regardless of whether they're positive or negative, are they getting smaller? Is the one on the left bigger than the one on the right? Well, we don't really need our calculator to determine, this is again one of the thousand reasons why I need for you to know what parent functions look like. Here's y equals the natural log of x, and here's x equal 1 and 2 and 3 and 4, and we can see that at those integer values that our outputs of our function are indeed getting bigger. So the natural log of 3 is bigger than the natural log of 2, which means I can reverse that sign when I'm dividing by a bigger value. This will be the case, and there is my if. I do indeed have an alternating series where the subsequent terms are getting smaller and smaller. So the only thing that I have to pop inside this limit is the positive portion of that nth term. Don't ever put your alternating portion in there. If you do, there's really only one thing that's going to happen. You're going to confuse the fire out of yourself, so don't do it, all right? So as n gets larger and larger and larger, we have natural log of huge inputs. That is going to infinity. 1 over huge is tiny. This series converges. Okay? So that's really all we're looking at. We'll work some more examples. I want you to be able to recognize what is the positive portion, what is the alternating portion. So let's rewrite this series. I'm going to put the alternating term out front. That's the only thing that's making this alternate. The rest of that is just the nth term. This is negative 1 to the n plus 1 times a sub n, where the nth term is n plus 1 over n. So as n gets larger and larger and larger, is it true that the absolute value, this right here tells me for sure, I don't have to generate any terms, this tells me we're alternating. That's you know, beyond a shadow of a doubt. Here's the only thing that I need to make sure of now that I have for if. And let's just pick two integer values of n. Let's pick 2 and 3. So is 2 plus 1 over 2 bigger than 3 plus 1 over 3? So is 3 halves bigger than 4 thirds? That's the only thing that we have to keep in mind. And if you're not sure, this is 1.5 and this is 1.333 and so on. And so, yeah, we're definitely, we have our if. So all we're going to do is pick up the positive portion of that nth term and plop it inside our limit and we are running the alternating series test. So for large n, 
This is acting like infinity over infinity. So I would do one iteration of Lahopital's. I'd get one plus zero in the top, one in the denominator. That does not equal zero. The last terms in the sequence that is n plus one over n are not sufficiently small enough for the sequence to converge. And since we're taking those sequence terms and recognizing that every other one of them are being subtracted from our accumulating sum is still not small enough for our accumulating sum to converge. This series diverges. That series diverges. All right, so let's look at this next example. This is equivalently n equal 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times 1 over n to the 1 half. This says, yep, I have an alternating term. Now I need to determine if this is the case. And again, I'll pick 2 and 3. Is 1 over the square roots of 2 bigger than 1 over the square roots of 3? Yes. Why? Because the square roots of 2 is smaller than the square roots of 3. And when I put them inside of fractions and divide by a smaller number, I get a bigger output. I have everything I need for the alternating series test. So I'm going to run it. The limit as n approaches infinity. I only put the positive portion of my nth term in that limit. The negative 1, the alternating part of the term, does not go in the limit for the test. The larger n gets, the larger the denominator gets, the smaller the whole term gets. This is going to 0. This series converges by the alternating series test. Because remember, we do need to qualify what test we're using. All right, lastly before we move on to more information about alternating series, let's look at this one. This one is the alternating harmonic series. And I know that because the positive portion of this is the harmonic series. It's got an alternating term in front of it, so this is the alternating harmonic series. This alternating term, and I can just do it in my head, when n equals 1, that's positive. When n equals 2, it's negative. When n equals 3, it's positive. So it is alternating. I can determine, given any two subsequent terms that I want to, that the terms, the absolute value of the terms, are headed to 0 as n gets large. So definitely one that qualifies for the alternating series test. So once we determine what's happening to this alternating series, then in the future, all we're going to have to do is identify it as the alternating harmonic series and say that it does what we're fixing to find out that it does. So I'm just going to pick up the positive portion of the nth term. As n goes to infinity, the term goes to 0. This series converges. And I never have to run that test again on the alternating harmonic series. Just like I don't have to run a good test on the harmonic series to prove ever to the AP reader that it diverges. All I ever have to do is identify it as the harmonic series and I get to say automatically that I know it diverges. So in that same vein, anytime you recognize you're dealing with the alternating harmonic series, all you have to do is identify it as such and state that you know it converges. So there's more information for us to learn 
concerning alternating series because it turns out we can quantify or qualify convergence. There are two types of convergence that we're going to be responsible for knowing when it comes to the AP exam. That's absolute convergence or conditional convergence. I've never seen them called anything other than that. So these terms you need to know. You need to know when an alternating series is absolutely convergent or converges absolutely. And you need to know when a series is conditionally convergent or converges conditionally. It'll be stated in either of those ways. So let's take a look at absolute convergence first. A series, and here's the series, n equal capital N, where capital N usually starts at 1, up to infinity of a sub n is absolutely convergent if the corresponding series of absolute values converges. Well, that's a little kind of symbol heavy for me. So here's what it says. This is what I want to make sure you know. If the positive series, which is that symbol right there, and its alternating counterpart, that one right there, both converge, then the alternating series is absolutely convergent or converges absolutely. We don't talk about positive series having absolute or conditional convergence. You're only going to see that when it comes to alternating series. So if the alternating series converges and the positive series converges, then the alternating series has absolute convergence. It is absolutely convergent or it converges absolutely. A series that converges but does not converge absolutely converges conditionally. This is important. We have to determine first of all that the series converges. That's not right. Well, let's just do it this way. If the positive series, sorry, that's absolutely wrong. If the positive series diverges, that'll show me for borrowing things from the internet, won't it? But its alternating counterpart converges. Woo, make sure that's right in your notes. The positive series diverges, but the alternating series converges, then the alternating series is convergent. It's just conditionally convergent, or it converges conditionally. Every single absolutely convergent series, which is this first case, converges. But not every convergent alternating series converges absolutely. That's what this statement means. Just because an alternating series converges doesn't mean it converges absolutely. It can converge conditionally. Please make sure that you have this statement correct. If the positive series diverges, but its alternating counterpart converges, then the alternating series is conditionally convergent. All right? So we're going to work a few more examples. There will be another video, so watch for that.